So in this first example, um, basically, guys, again, as I mentioned, if you have two terms, always look to factor out a common term. Now, technically, guys, we could look at this and just rearrange the terms, right? Put them in standard form. That's something we talked about um, in our first class period. You don't need to do that. But I think it's just kind of sometimes helpful to always have like those high end terms. Um, <clears throat> let's go and factor out. We see that um, they both have some x in common, x cubed, right? And it looks like 4 can be divided into both of them. So if I factor out a 4, uh, 4 x cubed, This is going to give me a negative 5x, and that would be plus 1. Now, I can take these terms. And again, remember, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the zeros, right? So therefore, I'm really trying to say, well, what numbers are going to make that statement true? OK? So that's what I'm looking for, is the numbers that are going to make that statement true. And therefore, you can apply the zero product property. And obviously, guys, you could show your work here, but I think you guys would agree you're going to get x equals 7. You could subtract 1, divide by negative 5. You're going to get x is equal to 1 fifth. Now, did I write, were these in our linear factored form? Could I factor this any further from this point? No. So therefore, we could say this 0 has a multiplicity of 3. And this one has a multiplicity of 1. So we could just write it like that, or we could use set notation. And just write it like that. Okay. So if we have two terms, looking to just factor out a common factor, obviously just by factoring out a common factor, you could see that already, boom, I can just use the zero product property. Or maybe sometimes you have to use difference of two squares, which this did not show us. But that is another possibility. So. Now, when we have a trinomial, again, my purpose for a trinomial, guys, was to look to factor out a quadratic. But before you do that, factor out any common terms. So you say, all right, well, these all have an x squared. So first of all, I'm trying to find the zeros. So I'm going to set my equation equal to 0, right? That's the fundamental idea of finding the zeros. And then I can factor out an x squared. Oh, crap. I have a trinomial, all right. What kind of trinomial do I have, though? Well, I have a trinomial where a is no longer equal to 1. Crap. We're now in chapter 2. Now we are going to start working on problems of a when a is not equal to 1. So I got good news and bad news. That's the bad news. The good news is um, that majority of the problems, guys, it's not going to be anything crazy. I'm not going to give you a problem where it's going to be like 12 and like 18. Like you're going to have to do like the AC method and something crazy. Majority of the problems where you have A is not equal to 1, you're only going to have like between two and four options to choose from. OK? So let's think about this based on what we learned in the last round. In the last round, we know that the quadratic, this trinomial, is going to be fact, is, we're going to factor like a trinomial, right? That means we can write this as a product of two factors. Agreed? So let's just do a little guess and check. OK, let's just think about this. Because the more and more you do this, the faster you're going to be able to do it in your head without making so many mistakes. But let's just do 4x and x, right? Because 4x times x gives you 4x squared. That's obvious and easy. What two numbers multiply to give you 1? You only got two options, 1 and 1 and negative 1 and negative 1, right? So let's just plug in 1 and 1. We obviously know the first two terms work. The last two terms don't work. And if we were to multiply the inner and the outer, would that give us 4x? No, it gives us 5x, right? 1 times x is x. 4x times 1 is 4x. 4x plus 1x is 5x. Does it really matter if I make these negative? Is that, no, that's just going to make it negative 5x, right? So the 4 and the x are not going to work. So what other two terms multiply to give us 4x squared? What about 2x and 2x? Now, when I multiply and combine my two terms inside, does that work? Yeah, right? So you guys can see, when you multiply those, um, that, gives you, uh, um, that gives you 4x. Now, the important thing, though, this is written as a linear factor, it is written as linear factorization, right? But could we simplify that linear factorization? Ooh. 
That tells me whatever that 0 is is going to have a multiplicity of 2, right? Because it's repeated. That's what multiplicity is. It's just a repeated 0, right? You can't do two x-intercepts at the same spot, right? When you have a repeated 0, it just changes the behavior of the x-intercept. So now we could you know, set these both equal to 0 and solve. And hopefully you guys would agree that my zeros are going to be 0 which is a multiplicity of 2, and let's see, negative 1 half, which is a multiplicity equal to 2. Yeah? OK, so that's with three terms, thinking trinomial. Now let's go to four terms. So again, we can't apply four terms like we did with two terms, like we did with three terms. We've got to look at this separately. right? We've got to think about, all right, so I know how to factor out the GCF. I know how to factor a trinomial. Right? So what am I going to do with four terms? Well, we don't have a special factoring technique that's unique to four terms. But what we can do is we can rely on our previous technique is, um, from, from the two terms. If I have four terms, that means I could basically group four terms into two sets of two terms. Yeah? That's, this is called the grouping technique. All right, so it doesn't have its unique process, you know, like the AC method, like this. But what we can do is we can group it. Now I say, oh, well, why don't I just treat each of those two terms like I did over here? Factor out the GCF, right? Or look for different, you know, factor out the GCF. So when I look to factor out the GCF here, I say, what two numbers? What do these have in common? You could say, now I'm going to be a little. I'm going to change this up. I'm going to say, oh, let's do it. X squared. So you can factor out an x squared. And when you factor on x squared, you're going to be left with a negative x plus 2. Right? OK. Now, here's the kind of kicker, though. Here's the thing you need to think about when doing this. Not only, you could factor this out, right? You could factor out a 9. Agreed? But the purpose, what you want, is you want, the, you want whatever's inside these black parentheses to be exactly the same. So if I factor out a 9, I'm going to get an x minus 2. I don't want an x minus 2. I want it to be a negative x plus 2. So instead of factoring out a 9, what should I factor out? Negative, negative 9. right? So you just kind of got to be a little bit smarter than sometimes the problem. Because of my goal is to have those two parentheses be exactly the same. Because in reality, what I did by factoring by, factoring by grouping, I didn't re rewrite this problem as a product. It still is. Now I just have two terms, right? I have one term subtracted from another term. <clears throat> so what I need to do again is factor out the GCF one more time. And if you don't get these to be the same, you can't factor them out. But don't you guys agree these are exactly the same? Yeah. So therefore, you can factor them out one more time. And now you can set them equal to. Um, now you can set them both equal to 0 and go ahead and solve. Or you could also factor out the negative to make it a little bit obvious. Um, or, sorry, you could write this as linear factorization form or a product of linear factors. right? And then we could just easily list all the zeros, 2 plus or minus 3. Yep. Factoring. I'll explain. <laughs> 